Welcome to the Mobile Money Nation. My name is AJ. Thanks for taking this time out of your day to watch this video. If you're not currently part of the Mobile Money Nation, all you need to do is hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button because you're really gonna like this video, and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Recently, I signed up for my first travel rewards card. Now in the past, I only used cashback rewards cards because the value that I received from those was best for me because I didn't travel a lot. But because I already have a lot of travel planned for this year and I know exactly where I'm gonna go, I have multiple trips that I'm gonna go on this year, I decided that this year will be the best time to go ahead and start my travel rewards credit card. Now with travel rewards credit cards, if you're not familiar with this specific credit card, with travel rewards credit cards, Whenever you use that card, you then receive points that can be used towards travel in the future. And typically, when you use those points for travel, you get more points than you would if you actually receive cash back. So the specific travel rewards card that I'm gonna talk about today is the Chase Sapphire Preferred. Now this is one of the best travel rewards cards that you can get, and if you search the internet, this is a card that many people recommend, and I've known about it for a couple years, but because I didn't do a lot of flying outside of work or a lot of traveling where I needed to get a hotel, I didn't feel that I needed it at the time. But this year is different, I have a lot of travel planned, and so, I'm gonna take advantage of the bonus that you receive once you sign up for a travel rewards card. And the bonus is where you get the biggest benefit. Now, of course, after the bonus time, which is usually three or four months after you first get a card, and that's with any card, not just with the Chase Sapphire Preferred, it is still valuable, but not valuable enough to where I would rather use that versus using normal cash back with a credit card. And that's only because the cash back is more versatile. I can use that cash back to either pay down the balance of the card, or I can use it to help pay down my student loans faster than I would just using my normal income. Now, speaking about the Chase Sapphire Preferred specifically, with this card, they do have a $95 annual fee, but the benefits that you get from this card are well worth that $95 fee if you use the card properly. Now, just for the general features of this card, you do get two times points whenever you use the card on travel or on dining. And when you're traveling, if you're traveling internationally, there are no foreign transaction fees. And I've seen fees around two to 3% typically with a lot of credit cards. And so that makes a big difference when you're traveling and you don't have that additional fee on top of whatever you're purchasing if you wanna buy souvenirs or buy food uh, when you're traveling. And there are also general benefits that you can get from any credit card, uh, trip cancellation, uh, rental waivers, so that you actually get insurance through your credit card instead of the insurance that the rental car provider may provide. And so those benefits aren't a big deal for this card specifically. That's general benefit that you receive from many credit cards. You only get one cent per dollar spent for anything that's not traveling or dining. So that two times points is really two cents per dollar. And so that means even if you don't use the points towards travel, you can actually get cash back like you would with a normal cash back card, but it's only at a rate of 1%. Now here's where the biggest benefit comes. If instead of using those points to get cash back, you use them to pay for travel, then you actually get a 25% bonus and every point is worth 1.25 points. So that essentially makes it a 1.25% cashback card when you actually use those points towards travel through the Chase Rewards Program. And when you use that card specifically, when you make travel and dining purchases, then it essentially makes those points worth two and a half points because you're getting 1.25 for every point and you're getting two points whenever you use it for dining or travel. Now the main feature and the main reason you would wanna sign up for the Chase Sapphire preferred card is for the sign up bonus. So right now you get a 60,000 point sign up bonus after you spend $4,000 within the first three months of signing up for the card. And that's in addition to the actual points that you receive for spending the $4,000. So of course, if the points that you receive, you only receive one point per dollar, then you're gonna get 4,000 points. But if you spend that whole 4,000 on travel and dining, then you can get up to 8,000 points. So it's probably gonna be somewhere in the middle between maybe about four or 5,000, depending on what you actually spend that $4,000 on. And so unless you have $4,000 worth of travel and dining that you know that you're already gonna spend within this next three month period, then you wanna use that card 
on normal expenses. So things like your groceries, maybe your bills, if you have the option to use your credit card to pay the bills. You can also use it for gas. Pretty much anything that you would normally have to spend your money on within that three month period that you sign up for the card, make sure it adds up to $4,000 before you even sign up for the card to make sure that you get that bonus within that three month period. So in this video, I'm gonna specifically talk about my plan for making sure I spend the $4,000 within this three month period. And if you're signing up for a card to get that bonus, you definitely wanna have a plan before you even sign up for the card. And because you're only spending $4,000 to get that 60,000 point bonus, plus another four to maybe 8,000 points just for that $4,000 worth of spending, this means that the cash back percentage that you're receiving is significantly increased because of that bonus. So only considering the 60,000 points and the $4,000 spent, so you're essentially getting 16 to 17 cents per dollar or 16 to 17% cash back on the money that you're spending within that period. And because you're getting a bonus, if you use those points towards travel, you're getting a 0.25% boost on every single point. That makes it a 20 to 21.25% percent or points per dollar that you're receiving for those points within that time period. So that's a significant difference and that's what makes these bonuses so attractive for people who are really into that travel rewards credit card usage. And so to make sure that I get that 16% or 20% cash back that I can then use towards travel, this is my three month plan to ensure that I spend the $4,000 while only spending money that I already plan to spend anyway. So the first item or items over the next three months is our cell phone bill. So I'm part of a family plan with Verizon Wireless and with that plan, our bill is typically around $300. So that means I'll pay that bill three times within the next three months, which will bring me up to $900 of spending just on a cell phone bill that we're already gonna pay anyway. The next major item is that I'm traveling for a wedding. So I'm gonna have to fly out. I'm gonna have to get either a hotel or an Airbnb. And we're also gonna have to buy food while we're out there as well. So for the two flights, that's gonna cost us about $350 each. So a total of $700. And then for where we're gonna stay, I'm estimating that it's gonna cost about $200 for the time period that we're gonna be staying in the area, as well as another $200 to spend on food. And so for that trip, alone, I'm estimating that that cost will be about $1,300. The next trip I plan to go on in the next three months or that I will be paying for is the Financial Freedom Summit. The Financial Freedom Summit is an event. It's actually the first annual event where people can go and learn more about how to take care of their finances, how to get out of debt, and how to properly invest for their future so that they can be financially independent. And if you follow other YouTubers or bloggers in the Financial Independence Retire Early community, many of them will actually be at this event. Some of them will be learning, some of them will be teaching. And so I personally will be there as well. And if you'd like to go to that event, I'll have a link in the description to where you can actually sign up to buy a ticket and go to that event. And I expect the cost of that flight to be around $300 now on this trip specifically, either the Airbnb or the hotel combined, it'll probably cost me about $400, that's my estimation. And then I'll probably spend about another $100 on food while I'm there. So this trip total for the Financial Freedom Summit will be about $800. Now I do have another trip planned at the end of the year, but with this bonus, this may actually make it free for me when I go on that trip, or at least the flight and maybe the hotel, but we'll see. And so as you can see, the total that I have currently is not $4,000 yet. It's only $3,000. Now in order to get the other $1,000 to make this bonus, I actually have my car insurance coming up towards the end of April. And with that car insurance, we normally pay the six months in advance. That way we can pay less on our insurance. But because we have that bulk payment, our insurance is normally five to $600 for the two cars that we have within a six month period. So I'll use the lower end of $500 just to be safe, and that'll knock me down to only having about $500 left to spend over the next three months in order to get that bonus. Now, spending $500 over three month period is not actually that hard. Once you think about spending on groceries, buying gas for two vehicles, and any other random expenses that may come up, that $500 will be spent very easily. With an estimation of just $100 a month on groceries, which is actually pretty low, that would be $300. And then spending about $50 a week on gas between two cars, that's $200 just in one month. 
And so I'll definitely spend $200 on gas, even if I drive less than I normally do within that three month period. So I will definitely hit that $4,000 mark and I will get the 60,000 bonus points with the Chase Sapphire Preferred card. But if for some reason, the estimates that I've made above are actually lower than expected, then I could always buy a gift card, maybe at the grocery store or buy a gift card for gas, things that I'm gonna spend money on in the future anyway, in order to make sure I get that bonus. But I don't expect that I'll have to do that. I only need to pay for the trips that I'm gonna go on, as well as my insurance, the six months, as well as my normal grocery shopping and purchasing gas from week to week. And so once I have that 60,000 bonus points, that is essentially worth, once you count the 1.25% that you get for using towards travel, that is essentially $750 that I can use towards flights or hotels through Chase's reward system. Now, if I don't actually use it for travel, then that 60,000 points is only worth $600, which I can then take as cash back as you would with a normal cash back credit card. So it is still actually pretty versatile. In the past, I only thought you could use it for travel rewards, which is another reason why I didn't really wanna sign up for it. But even with the 1% cash back that you would get just for the normal points, I use the City Double Cash Card, which actually gives me 2% cash back. So if I'm not actually using it for travel, then the City Double Cash Card or many other cards that may give you one and a half or maybe 2% cash back, those would actually be better options for you. Now, other things that I could use my credit card for to make sure I get to that $4,000 uh, minimum in order to get the bonus points is that my light bill is actually one option where I can actually use my credit card. Now, depending on where you live, that may not be an option or depending on your provider, but I can also pay my internet bill. And in some places, you may actually be able to pay your mortgage or your rent with your credit card. So if that's an option for you, then that's something that can easily be covered within a three month period. But no matter what your situation is, make sure you have a plan for how you're gonna spend the money that you need to get the bonus for the travel rewards card that you're signing up for. Because if you don't get that bonus, then it's not really worth it as much because you could just use a regular cashback card and you're getting essentially about the same amount of cashback that you would for a normal cashback card versus using a travel rewards card. So if you use travel rewards cards, make sure you leave a comment in the description to talk about maybe the specific card that you use or maybe the best benefit that you've received from using the travel card. Maybe there's a specific trip or a specific event that if you didn't have those bonus points, maybe you wouldn't have been able to make that trip. So talk about that in the comment section. Now I will have a blog post that will go into more detail about the plans that I made for this. So if you want to see it written out, make sure you check out my blog at ajmobilemoney.com slash blog and that should pop up. But thanks for watching this video. If you're not already a part of the Mobile Money Nation, all you need to do is subscribe by hitting the subscribe button down below. Hit the like button because you really like this video and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.